Hey everybody, Mike here. Welcome to the channel and welcome to a new video in Maya 2023. Well, today we are doing a subscriber request video uh, submitted by Need to Know. And his question was, uh, uh, you know, how do I set up an animated tank track? Now, first of all, there are multiple ways of doing that. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, a method using the MASH network. Um, I have seen other videos on this. Uh, I think the distinction might be that I will not only explain how to do it, but more importantly, to understand uh, completely and correctly what you're doing while you set it up, all right? So that said, we're gonna get rid of all of this and we're gonna start from scratch. So we're gonna go to file and new scene, don't save, all right. So step number one is make a section of a tank track. We're gonna keep that super simple. I'm gonna take a polygon cube. We're gonna hit R, we're gonna scale that out, push that down, give it some length like so. And then we're gonna hit injured edge loop, set it to multiple and two, put that in here, Q on the keyboard, right click face, select one, and then shift select the other. Control E to extrude, R to pull out, and there you have it. There's our tank track section, all right? We're gonna do it into the outliner. We're gonna double click on it, and let's call this tank, I think it's called tank thread, right? Thread piece, you get the idea, okay? All right, cool, so we have that. Now, what do we need next? Well, we need a, a path uh, to allow us to uh, position this on that path, right? So we're gonna get this out of the way for a minute. I'm gonna hit Control H to hide it, so we can just pull it back later, right? And then we're gonna go into this view in X, so side view X. We're gonna go to uh, Create, NURBS Primitives. We're gonna select the circle, option box, edit and reset, so we're all on the same page. I'm not gonna change anything with the exception of number of sections. Let's set that to 16. That will allow us to have 16 control vertices that will help us to shape that circle into something that looks a little bit more like a tank thread, right? Hit create. Right now it's flat on our origin, so we're gonna hit E to rotate it. Hold down J, and there you go. And then we're gonna hit R and we're gonna scale it up quite a bit. And if we now right click and go to control vertex, you will see that I got a whole bunch of dots going on here that I can grab and change. Now, we want this to look a little bit more like a tank thread. So we're gonna select the whole thing. And with R selected, we're gonna scale it out a little bit. And we're gonna push that down a little bit. And then we're gonna start to individually change them. Take the bottom one, hit W, move it up. And we want the bottom ones to be uh, flat on the floor, of course, because that's what the surface is of the tank, okay? Then we're gonna take the ones on top here. We'll uh, push them down to about here. We'll take these two as well. And it's not really the point of the video to make this look fancy, so you get the idea, right? Okay, now let's say this is what it's supposed to look like at some point. Okay, cool. Now, we're gonna go to display and show all to get our tank thread thingy back. And you can see that that thing is quite large. So we're gonna select it, we're gonna hit R, we're gonna scale it down. I think that looks a little bit more reasonable. And that's it. We're not gonna move it around or anything, we're just gonna leave it where it is. Let me turn off our grid here for a second. Okay. Now, um, this is where it gets interesting. We're gonna use a machine network to do this. Um, like I said, there are videos that explain how to do this, but they don't explain how it exactly works. And I think that's really important, right? Now, if you create a mesh network, then you take an object and by making that mesh network, you can do all sorts of things. You can uh, duplicate the object. You can duplicate it, uh, but in different locations. You can put a randomizer on it. You can do all sorts of funky stuff with it, right? So we have that section selected and we're simply gonna go up to mesh 
and then we're going to click on create a mesh network now as i do that you get this line going on here it's not a line it's actually a row of tank threads the reason why is by default when you create a mesh network it will create a mesh distribute network and i'll show you select the mesh in your outliner click on Control a to open up the attribute editor and you will see that it has a main mesh tab where you have all the options to add stuff and so forth and then there is a mesh distribute node that has been created because that's the default as i mentioned now right now it says number of points is 10. if i increase or decrease that you will see that that line is changing right and that's because it simply has 10 of these things right and they're going to the right so they're following the x direction the distance on x right now is set to 20. so if i decrease that you'll see that it will become shorter right and we're going to do that until we are set to distance zero so what you're looking at right now is 10 tank threads right on top of each other now immediately when i select this guy you see that i lost my information on the mesh network because it has to be selected in the outliner okay so i got 10 of these points now what i want is for these to be distributed over that curve how do i do that well i need to go to the mesh tab and i first need to add a curve type into the network i already have a distribution node right i just show you and it i can see that based on a tab up here and what i'm going to do next is i'm going to create a curve node and when i create that add curve node it's going to add one up here it says mash one curve and it's adding one here as well and you'll see that in a second okay now it's cool that i have that tab but as far as curves is concerned there's nothing in here so what i need to do is i need to go to my outliner and take that curve that i created with my middle mouse button and drag that over here and drop it into this box now what you do not want to do is select the curve in your perspective view because as soon as you do that it will jump up to the nerve circle instead of staying in the mash node right so we're still in the mash node we're going to go to mash one curve and suddenly you're seeing something very funky going on here what is that right well we now have the object placed on the curve it's not positioned in the correct uh, location it, the rotation is incorrect and so forth and so on so let's fix that first we're going to go to step it says 0 0.1 as i increase that step you'll see that it starts to move these guys around until it kind of hugs that curve right cool which is nice but it's not nearly enough and also the orientation is wrong now what we need to do is we need to change the position of uh, these segments now this is a bit finicky uh, because uh, they are now positioned on the curve and their orientation is as such so if you think you are doing something in world mode uh, it's not the case so if i for example rotate like this you'll see that it's rotating up now that's not a big problem we're just going to hit j to hold that uh, position in 90 degrees and then we're going to go and do this now that gives us a correct position of all these segments now we don't have enough as you can see so we can change that and where we're going to do that is in our distribution node so we're going to go to our mesh network again we're going to go to our distribution node right now it says number of points 10. now as we increase that we'll get more and more and i'm not sure how many we will have but you just have to push that slider let's say i think that's pretty close 50. all right so that's 50 and it all looks good so now if you go in here and we hit play on our animation button in the bottom right corner it should rotate and it does and it also does that very very fast as you can see now way too fast of course so we're going to stop the animation and what we're going to do is change the speed now for that we need to go to the mesh one curve tab and here it says animation speed so we're going to bring that way, way down 0 
enter. And I'm going to increase the number of frames on the animation as well. Otherwise, it's going to be a very short, jumpy animation. So let's set that to 1,000 frames, right? There we go. We'll have that cache out. There it goes. Let's we'll wait that for a second. Okay, cool. Let's hit play and see what we get. And as you can see, it's rotating, but it's very, very, very slow. And actually, my animation speed seems to be at uh, zero, so it rounded up. So let's do 0 0.001. That's a bit better. 0 0.01. All right, you get the idea. So, yeah, that's how you do it. Now, uh, the thing to remember here is that if you are quitting something like this, oh, okay, he's freaking out. The thing to remember here is uh, when you're creating something like this, that you understand the relationship between the mesh network, the components of the mesh network being, for example, a curve tab or a distribution tab and what they are driving, right? So in this case, your thread, uh, the piece of your tank thread has been driven by a distribution node, which increases the number and the position and so forth and the curve node that drives the position, right? So the direction on the curve. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Um, I thought it was a lot of fun to do. Uh, if you've got any questions or any add-ons for this uh, video, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to pick up on that, all right? Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.